Hi, my name is Kyle and I'm an applications engineer at Maxim Integrated. Currently one of my main jobs is to help people debug any issues with their current circuit relating to the switching power supply of the design. A common issue people run into is incorrect placement of input and output capacitors in the layout of the board. So I wanted to clear up some of these issues today and provide some capacitor layout guidelines for power supplies. A switching power supply is any form of electrical power supply that includes a switching regulator to convert this power. Some of the roles that the input and output capacitors play in a power supply circuit are to reduce the input and output voltage ripple to produce the smooth TC output and to supply a constant load current. The main problems that designers run into when placing input and output capacitors is having too much distance between the input pin and the input capacitor and the output pin and the output capacitor. This leads to traces that are most likely too long and not wide enough. Long and narrow traces in turn can cause the inductance to increase and that will also lead to larger voltage spikes that can affect the performance of the output. So here are some tips when placing capacitors in your power supply layout that are essential to remember. Number one, always follow the specific layout guidelines for the part you're using, which are usually found in the data sheet. Number two, placing capacitors in the correct location and order will help with overall layout. And with buck converters, input capacitors place first and as close as you can to the IC as they have the largest impact on the circuit. As with boost converters, output capacitors are placed first and as close as you can to the IC as they have the largest impact on the circuit. For number three, in input capacitors, output capacitors, and the inductor should all have a short of trace lengths to both the IC and ground. And the final tip today is going to be if multiple capacitors of different sizes are needed, the smallest capacitor should be placed closest to the IC because the smallest capacitor is dominant at high frequencies where noise from the parasitics has more of an impact. And now onto the demo. And to help exemplify some of the issues that incorrect placement of input and output capacitors cause, I created a converter using the MAX 17506 and move the input and output capacitors far away to display some effects of the performance on the converter. To start, I use Maxim's EESIM DC to DC design tool to design the ideal circuit for my converter. Now I will show you how I picked my converter. So I'm going to use enter part number here and do the MAX 17506 and as you can see it pops up there. And I'm going to do an input voltage of 12 volts. So we can just put 12 for all of these. I'm not going to mess with these here. And then for the output voltage, I'm going to do 3.3 volts with a load current of 5 amps. And I'm going to leave all of these the same. Balance, efficiency, and size. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to design for cost. And for my switching frequency, I'm going to do 313 kilohertz and change my soft start time to 0 0.008 seconds. And other than that, I'm going to keep it like that. And then from here, I am going to show you what the schematic looks like. Here is the generated schematic that I will be working with for this demo. After inputting the desired settings on the previous page, eSIM creates the schematic for me and I can run various tests on it that you will see shortly. I then created three different boards with this circuit in mind. Board number one is the optimized layout and that one I followed the layout guidelines to create. Board number two is going to be the input capacitors are placed far away from the IC and the in input capacitors are roughly several inches away from the input pins. And board three, the only difference from board two is it's just the output capacitors are placed far from the IC and they're placed, the output capacitors are roughly several, several inches from the output pins. And here is where we see the expected results of the optimized layout. So scenario one here is going to be the optimized layout and the efficiency graph that you can see is 
both the simulated and measured results are similar with peaks of roughly 93%. And for the load transient graph, you can see with a load step of 2.5 amps to 5 amps was used and the results were nearly identical. The simulated results showed a 70 millivolt over overshoot and undershoot while the measured results showed an 80 millivolt un overshoot and undershoot. For the switching node waveform graph, you can see that at a frequency of 313 kilohertz, the expected period would be 3.2 microseconds, and the simulated period was 3.4 microseconds with a 1.1 microsecond on time. The measured period was 3.1 microseconds with a 0.9 microsecond on time. And for the output voltage ripple, we can see that with a 2.5 amp load, the simulated output voltage ripple was 5.2 millivolts peak to peak, while the measured output voltage ripple was 10 millivolts peak to peak. And as you can see here, the simulated results and measured results were very close for all of these waveforms, which helps prove that this is an optimized layout for the MAC 17506. And here are the results of moving the input capacitors a few inches away from the input pins. And like I mentioned earlier, this is scenario two, where the input capacitors are placed far from the IC. And with this, the MAX, there's not much to show as the MAX 17506 would not start up actually under any circumstances. And on to the final board. Here are the results of moving the output capacitors a few inches away from the output pins. This is scenario three where the output capacitors are far away from the IC. And in PWM mode, the MAX 17506 did not start up at all. But once it was switched to PFM mode, the MAX 17506 was able to start up, but it had an incorrect output voltage with no output regulation. And that's everything for today. As you guys can see, the placement of capacitors can have a large impact on the performance of your power supply. So remember, always check for any additional part specific guidelines that could affect the performance as well. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you all next time.